All right, so it's not about the crypto. Lately, on and off, and, and then a while back when crypto was really hot, I talked a lot about crypto trading. And it, trading is trading, okay? And it's not about the crypto. The reason I'm talking about crypto so much right now, obviously, is because it's hot, and so are stocks. But the bottom line is you're trading traders and not markets. It doesn't matter what you're trading. And, and one of the things that kind of it kind of blows my mind a little bit is these people who should know better are out there poo poo and Bitcoin. And they've been doing so. At least I can remember back to 4,000. I don't have enough energy to go back through all my old emails and see if they were bearish before then. And you have to learn how to not, and I'll just say, be frank, you just have to learn how to not give a shit when it comes to trading. And I think if you don't care about Bitcoin or try to wrap your head around it and you just look, is it going up? Is it going down? And as you'll see in a few minutes, use a little money management, you'll do just fine. Anyway, there are the trades on this one. This one stopped out recently. And this was a very small position. I only put up 319 bucks on this one. And fortunately, within a day or so, it, it popped higher. So I exited half. And it's the same sort of thing we do with the core methodology. And one thing that I've been doing, and I tried years ago, and it, it sort of failed miserably, although I never really did all the math on it. But what I was doing is I trade these shit coins like this one, and I would leave a little bit of money in the native currency, so to speak. So this, or whatever you want to call it, the token or coin. So like this TIA, whatever the hell it is, I would leave a little bit in this TIA once I've got once I was finished with the trade or once the trade ended. And it was interesting. I saw a lot of these people a couple of years ago who were running these Bitcoin miners, and that was going to be my way of mining. But I noticed that if they were mining shit coins, they actually would get paid or they would convert it over to Bitcoin when they got paid. So they got paid in Bitcoins, even though they might be mining this TIA or whatever. And I don't know which coins are mining or mineable. Uh, mining is is not something that you can really make money in, in this day and age. I don't, I don't personally, I don't think as an individual you can. Maybe years ago you could, but no longer. But anyway, what I did do with this one and some other ones is take off a small amount of money and then convert it into Bitcoin and to just kind of have that be my mining, so to speak. Anyway, the trade ended and $732 came off the table when the trade was finished. And this whole trade was 420% total. And let's see if we have the math in here. So it started with 319 and then 991 was the total that came out of the market. So this is a profit of $672. And I only started with 300 bucks in this particular case. This was in a smaller crypto account. And by the way, that's the other thing about crypto is you don't need a huge account. And, and again, trading is trading. And trading is all about getting the reps in. The more cycles you go through, the more reps you go through, the more automatic these things become. So for instance, with this pair or any other pairs that I'm gonna show you, the first thing I do as soon as I get a fill is I put in my IPT. So right here, this was a couple of days ago, I got filled here and then I immediately put in my IPT. And in stocks, as you know, and if you look at the trading service, you could look at the spreadsheets and you could look at the archives, davelearner.com slash archives, and you'll see how much risk on a percentage basis, which is also your initial profit target. That's based on the underlying instrument, not the total amount at risk. So in some cases, it might be 15%, like the K and F, and I'll show you that one in one second too. And in other cases, it might be something wild and crazy, like some of these mystery charts where it might be 20% or more. But in Bitcoin, I'm sorry, in crypto, especially, specifically the shit coins, I'm just putting in a 20% IPT. Now, over time, as these markets mature and cool off a little bit, you probably want to go in and do an IPT like you would in stocks and get all your position sizing just right. Anyway, so there's the trades right there. I'm still in this trade. So entry, in this particular case, I actually fat figured an order because this is uh, still a small crypto account. I was only intended to put $1,000 in 
and it's like I didn't get filled and then I hit again or I hit the maximum amount. I forget how it happened, but somehow I ended up with a little bit more, but it immediately moved in my favor. So I said, well, let's just see what happens. Now I know I'm making a mistake by doing that. It's, um, and, and you can't get a little bit pregnant. I, get, I got you. But I figured it was kind of a smallish position. And as long as it was moving in my favor, I figured it would be okay. But uh, Linda Rasky and Trading Sardines, I don't think I have it handy, which is a really good book. I helped um, Linda sent me a copy and I helped, uh, or sent me the PDF and I helped to work on it a little bit. So I was uh, really um, intimately familiar with the book, so to speak. And uh, one of the things she says in there is correct mistakes immediately. I probably need to do that more than I do. I do take a little bit of a wait and see approach and that's bit me in the ass a few times. So do as I say, not as I do. The other day, just for S and Gs, I was gonna do some micro E minis, you know, just a S and G trade, which is a bad idea too. And I ended up buying E minis and that made for kind of a, a scary morning. But anyway, probably the best thing to do is to correct mistakes immediately as opposed to a little bit of wait and see. But I, I took a wait and see approach and then I took off 876. So at 20%, if you're trading $1,000, uh, investing, so to speak, $1,000, we don't want to lose $1,000 per position, but let's just say we're doing $1,000 for per position, as I have been doing in some of these accounts, just because they've been moving so fast. And anyway, we're looking to take a 20% profit. So it's $200, but we're only taking half, so that's 100 bucks. So in this case, we took off half, and that was a gain of $143 in the mark to market, at least where this pair was earlier. And we'll go to live crypto in a few minutes was at 968. And so that's a 32% run in a day and a half. So that's pretty cool there. So 1466 was put up, 876 came off, 968 was the mark to market. So that's a gain of 378. Sounds like marky mark, mark to market, huh? Here's another one. Now this one, this must have been all the money I had left in the account, or I did this in a smaller account, but I only put up 667 and took off at 20%. So that was a gain of $64, so, you know, woo -hoo. but better than the poking eye. You do that over a couple of days, it begins to add up. 100 bucks a day is $25,000 a year in stocks. And I guess in crypto, it'd be 36, $500. That's right. Let me just, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Anyway, so the mark to market on that was 646. And that's a gain of 100% again in just a few days on this particular pair. So there's all the math over here based on the mark to market. Open profits of 377. And look right here, only put up $667. Okay. So, by the way, one reason I'm showing you this too, in addition to getting the rep, reps in, so to speak, is that I think us traders who have been around for a little while, and, and obviously I'm including everyone here tonight from the Facebook group, because I know a lot of you guys personally, and I know you know what you're doing, and uh, YouTube crowd don't know you as well, but I will eventually. But the bottom line is, you know how to trade, you know how to use money management, you know how to say next when the time comes and get out and go find something else that's moving. Whereas I think those who are a little bit newer to trading, they they tend to get a little too caught up in the emotions of, of themselves and the markets and they get caught up in the whys. And uh, I think I mentioned this last week, but now in the gym, a few people figured out what I do because I have a tattoo on my arm that has uptrend, downtrend and sideways. <laughs> In case I forget, you know, some big blue arrows, and a few people figured out that uh, I trade based on these uh, this tattoo. And they they when I hit the gym, they're always like, "Hey, why did Bitcoin go up?" And I'm like, "People bought it. People buying it. You know, it doesn't matter why. And you might never know why a market is moving. It just is what it is. And you." I wish I could think of the quote off the top of my head, but I think Larry Williams once said, in order to become a successful trader, you have to learn how to not care. You have to have this cognitive uh, dissonance or uh, what's the word for it, um, where, you, where you just don't care about uh, dispassion, not cognitive dissonance. You have to be 
like a physician, you have to be clinically dispassionate. And it's like the more you care, the worse you do. And it's sort of one of those paradoxes. That's something that we've been talking about a lot in the Facebook group lately. And that's another, I know I keep saying I'm working on a piece on this and that, but I've got so much content that I'm working on, it's crazy. But I am working on a paradox and dilemma topic. And, and that's one of the perverse things, so to speak, about trading is there's so many paradoxes and dilemmas. And I'll get to a few of those in just a minute or two. Anyway, here's a trade here. And you can see that put up $1,000, 596 came off. Again, we're looking for 20%. So roughly $200 total profit. You take it off half of that. In this case, it turned out to 96 to be $96. And the mark to market is about 538. So not a huge profit left in this one. And technically, my stop should be at break even on that one. So that's a 20% move. And again, that's like in a day and a half. So if you annualize that, which is probably a bad idea. But if you annualize it, and I think it's okay to do, I love annual annualizing things because it, it, it makes you realize what you're looking at longer term. And, and like I said a second ago, in stocks, $100 a day, that's $25,000 a year. And a lot of times I'll have an S&G trade, ah, it's only 100 bucks, who cares? It's like, well, you keep doing that or you do that several times a day before you know it. Like, let's say you did, did that four times a day and lost four times, that's 100 grand a year. So it starts to add up a little bit after a while. Anyway, I did a mark to market on this one. So I was down 153 bucks on the trade. I do have a stop in place on this one. Unfortunately, this was a, a core methodology type of trade. It took off, then it pulled back and I posted it in Facebook. So I don't know if you guys are still in, anybody in Facebook still in this trade? So with the core methodology, we're looking for uh, a thrust followed by a pullback. But you can see that I still have an open order at that profit target, 20% above where I got in. So there it is, $983 was put up, 20% profit target. So far, it hasn't hit it. I do have a hard stop in place on this one. Now, if this was a stock, my stop would probably be like way down here somewhere, or certainly below this low, somewhere below this low. But in crypto, at least right now, it's moving so fast, I think it's okay to maybe use a little bit tighter stops. It's okay to scratch out a little bit. I, I do scratch out quite a bit, especially on the breakout type of trades with crypto. And as you probably know, breakouts tend to fail more often than not. So you will be wrong a lot. And it's a, it's a little bit different type of trading when you're caught up in those crazy relative strength type of, type of markets. And I'll, I'll flesh that out a little bit when we get to the live charts. But anyway, I just wanted to show you one that wasn't necessarily working just so you see that, hey, we lose money here too sometimes. But you can see nice thrust higher followed by a pullback. That's almost kind of textbook in nature. And that's why I put it up in Facebook because it's just a, a generic looking pullback. 